Drill rigs are designed to move, but they sure don't move themselves. Rig moves can be one of the most dangerous parts of the drilling operation. Rig crews are responsible for the maintenance of their rig, as well as taking it down and putting it back up on a new location. But it is the trucking crews who have the responsibility to move everything, and the hazards they face can be different. This video is intended to show the industry's practices with regards to rig moves. The purpose of the video is to introduce workers to the hazards they could encounter on location during a rig move and describe ways to avoid these hazards. When you see this icon, there is additional information on this DVD that can help control that hazard. Let's hear from the industry experts who face these hazards every day about how trucking crews can do this job safely. I'm a trucking superintendent slash truck pusher for Bandera Trucking, Abilene, Texas. Uh, my main job is to get the drilling rigs moved on location. The biggest deal is, is, is safety. You know, I don't care what kind of job it is. You don't take risk. You, you know what you got to do and you do the best you can to keep your people from getting hurt. And I, I wouldn't want to work for a company that made you take risk all the time. Rig moving can be one of the most dangerous jobs there is, or it can be just a day at work. Drill rigs come in all sizes, from small tire-mounted ones to giant walking rigs. The bigger the rig, the more complicated it is to move. There are some common types of equipment and hazards that you may see during a rig move. This video will introduce you to these and describe how to keep yourself safe while you're working around them. Some of the things we'll cover are, how important it is to communicate during a rig move. We will show you some common hand signals and how CBs and radios are used so that everyone on location knows what's going on and what hazards they need to watch for. How to work safely around forklifts by making sure the driver knows where you are at all times. We will show you how pipe and collars can roll when they're on a forklift and what you need to do to keep yourself from getting hurt. How gin pull trucks are used on a move and what you need to know about the different lines and winches they use to lift loads. We'll talk about the signals used to communicate with the driver, the swamper, and even the truck pusher. What a swamper needs to know about using tag lines, staying away from pinch points, staying clear of suspended loads, and communicating with the driver. What tandem trucks are used for on a move, and what bobtailed loads look like. What you need to do to work safely around haul trucks, such as chaining down properly and staying away from pinch points. How to stay safe when cranes are used on the move. When to wear fall protection and how to use it properly. How weather changes a rig move, including what to do when it is really hot or really cold. We'll also show you how trucks can slip on mud or ice and what you need to do when things are slippery. How to move a rig safely when you have electric lines in the area. The size of the rig makes a difference on, on how you disassemble and assemble the rig, but it's, the process is pretty much the same no matter what size. Uh, you might not have near as many trucks on a small rig. On a big rig, you might have cranes on location. You might have big cranes, you might have walking cranes. On rig move days, there's a lot of operations going on at the same time, and it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of communicating during the move. We have a system where our drivers are talking on the CV back and forth to each other. We have the two-way radios we communicate with. He gets that off of you, just pull off out of the way and park your truck and help. I'm gonna send Andrew back after that other load because he can run a little faster. When you have swampers on the ground, they use hand signals for their big line, little line, that type stuff. And uh, that's one thing that the swampers learn during their training period, is how to signal to the trucks what lines they want them to use. Most people always use their, their thumb for the big line to, to pick something up or, or let something down. And uh, on your little line, the small line on the gin pole trucks and on the Tandems, they use their little finger for the little line, and that's just common knowledge that that's, that's your little line. Then your backing and, and pulling forward is just your, your normal, you know, come here or, or pull out. Communication is very important. 
When I'm calling Dickie back to back up, I stand completely away from the rear of the truck where he can see me in his plain sight. I hand signal to him to come back. I close my fist for him to stop. You always have to keep an eye out where you're at, where the truck is, any other equipment moving around. You just always have to know where you're at and be sure you're in a safe place. Oh, when I'm on the rig move, one of, one of the most important things is when I'm backing up, make sure there ain't nobody in the way because I could run over them if I don't see them. My swamper should always stand on the side of the truck. This side is the swamp side. My side is the driver's side. I see them better on my swamp side than on my driver's side. And there's a bumper zone, always away from at least four or five foot. If there's something that he don't know, he'll stop me. I'll get off the truck, we'll look at it, and I'll explain to him what, what we gotta do, or if I see something wrong, I'll stop. The swamper's supposed to be watching me, but I'm supposed to be watching him too, also. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, we both gotta have communication. When the swamper gets the tag line on the load, he'll weigh me off. I'll pick up on it and I'll, I'll stop to where, I can, where I can see the load. And then I'll move forward and we'll just creep along. Nice and easy, low gear, nothing fast. Well, the first thing we tell a new swamper about pinch points is one of the main things is not be, be behind the truck when you're backing up. That's uh, number one, no matter what. Pinch points are everywhere, front, side. Not just me, another truck could be beside me and put me in a pinch point. The truck supervisor or pusher, he's on location with us, on location, walking around. If he sees something, he'll holler on the radio. Or, Oh, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. When we have a new hand, a new hire, the first day or so, I want them to kind of stand back and watch the operation and, and help out where they can. We dress them in green shirts and green hard hats to where everybody knows they're a new hire and there's several different hazards in rig moving and for new hire, a swamper behind the truck is watching and paying attention where everyone is and making sure you don't get caught in between, making sure you don't get in a pinch point situation and, uh, and staying out from under suspended loads. You use your tag line properly and anything that's suspended up over your head step back away from it, stay out from under it. You know, any, any hand in drilling, if they see any hand doing something that they shouldn't be doing or something that's dangerous, not only new hires. If they see an old hand, someone that's been here 15 years, they see them doing something they shouldn't be doing. Hey, watch your overhead, don't walk underneath that block. Get they have here. the opportunity to shut the job down and talk about the right way. All of our drivers and forklift hands, are, they're required to wear their seat belts when they're in their equipment. It takes a qualified person to run a, run a forklift in the oil field. It's, you, you're constantly looking. You've got a lot going on. And uh, trying to load trucks, trying to unload trucks and watching trucks pulling around you and, and hands going every different direction. You've got your pipe and collar rolling on your forks. It takes people to know how to handle them and not to get their hands in there. Don't try to stop a rolling collar. You know, those collars weigh 3,000 pounds or better a piece and a 180 pound or 200 pound man's not gonna stop it. On your gen pole trucks, when you're lifting and, and unloading equipment, you have them get together, get in sync together, and, and work together. And it takes getting them both coordinated and in the same gear in their trucks and, and picking up things at the same speed. That way you don't have one 
out of sync and he's picking up more than the other and have the potential of breaking your line or something like that. Before we go out on the rig move, we do a pre-trip inspection. That means we inspect our tractor, our trailer, make sure all our lights working before we leave this yard. If we got wear in our lines, we cut them off, cut off the bad spot, put a new button. And anytime we got a bad line, we'll replace the whole line. If you got a bad king, you could be lifting a big load, it'll break and it'll hurt somebody. Somebody's gonna get hurt. The reason they pull tension on my line is to keep my line straight up here, because if it's not straight, that much weight, when I go pick up on it, I'll, I'll keep my line, I'll ruin my line. You'll have to replace, put a brand new line. You have to work with the truck. There's no point in pulling on the cable if he doesn't have the brake released. So the truck does most of the work, you just help it along. The cable on the Genpo truck is very heavy, uh, very heavy duty, but uh, necessary, very necessary. If it's too heavy for you to move, leave it. It's a whole lot easier to come and get it with a truck or the forklift and move something that's heavy than two or three people try to move it and then you end up with one with a back strain or they drop their end and then someone mashes their feet or, or you mash fingers or hands. You, you could hurt yourself out here just by pulling a muscle, um, straining your back, straining your legs, your arms. It's just a matter of watching how you do it. There are easy ways to do it, you just have to catch on to it. On a gen pole trucks, your, your big line is your line that runs off your main winch, your biggest winch, and it goes through the shivs, up through the top of the poles, and, and that's what has your uh, hook on it. Your little line is the one that goes up and it's tied to your top of your poles which is used to lay your pose down. If you're picking up something real light, you can lay your pose back to where you can get to it. If it's something heavy, you stand your pose up straighter to where you can back up to it and pick it up without picking the front end of the truck up off the ground. We've got a few trucks that has a third winch on it, and when you pick up something, you hook into it and you pull it up against the back of the truck to secure it. That way it doesn't swing and it doesn't doesn't move on you and you've got it secured to the back of your truck. They need to pay attention to what they're doing, make sure it doesn't have any burrs in the line that catch their gloves. It's where when the line is spooling up, they don't get their hand caught in that bottom shiv down there. You know, there's, there's been people get get their hands caught in there and some have lost fingers and stuff and uh, gloves is required. Uh, that is part of your PPE, just like hard hats and safety glasses and steel toe boots. Your tandems on location is your biggest trucks that handle and bobtail your mud pumps, your fuel tanks, your uh, generators, that type stuff. That's, that's what we call bobtailing a load is, is when it's sitting on the roller and he picks it up, takes it off and sets it down for a, a haul truck to load or in some instances on the short moves, he just takes it to the new location and sets it down. They have a lot of different hazards. You've got the potential of, of the ground giving way, the truck leaning over. You could turn pumps over or, or whatever you're bobtailing. Uh, you've got the potential of your high lines, the same as your gen pole trucks do, watching the high lines. And your winch lines is the same as the gen trucks. We take our bridles off on and off our loads, that way when the driver's putting it on the load that he's fixing to pick up, he can inspect his bridle to make sure it doesn't have any lines, any strands broken the line and that type of stuff. They own your haul trucks, normally they have one winch and they either pull a low boy or a, or a flat trailer or a float. On longer moves they have the low boys behind them They'll, once the tandem takes the load out and sets it down, then they'll back up and load it and chain it down and they'll haul it back, and, you know, haul it to the new location. I try to break my new drivers out is on a haul truck, getting in and out from under trailers and, and uh, learning how to load drill string, learning how to load the other loads and, and teaching them to chain down properly. When you get to the rigs that have the, the cranes, it really gets confusing, especially your 
hand signals because the cranes and the trucking are completely different. And the biggest thing on, on that is to let the cranes do their deal and stay out of their way. If there's a crane involved in the on the location, on the move, they're normally the ones in charge. If you're four foot off the ground, you have to wear a uh, harness. Uh, anytime we are working in the derrick, when the derrick's laid over, or anytime you're you're above four foot up off the ground, you wear a harness to where you can tie off. If you have two lanyards, where you've got one hook all the time, and that way, if something if you was to slip, you, you've got one tied off, and then it protects you from falling and keeps you from from getting injured. We, I try to tell, convince my hands if they've got the fall protection on. You want to be tied off because if you fall and you've got that fall protection on, all them buckles are going to hurt you when you hit the ground. Weather most of the time is one of our biggest hazards. It's either too cold or it's too hot. If it's, if it's about right, then, well then the wind's blowing about 50 and you're, you're having to deal with dust and dirt and that type stuff. Our heat issues, we try to shut people down and, and let them give them time to cool off and to take the day a little slower, not, not overexert themselves. And if they go to getting hot, shut down. We carry uh, bottled water with us and keep things to keep them hydrated and, and that type of situation. And then you have the, then you have the cold. The wet and the cold, and that's that's uh, that's a big issue. With it being cold, you know, we tell them to dress for success. You know, put more layers on, and you know, it, it, if you start getting warmer, that way you can just start taking layers off. And being so slippery out here, it's uh, it doesn't take much to slip and fall. And older we get, the, the worse it gets. You know, but uh, we just get our guys to slow down that we shouldn't be in a, a big enough hurry that somebody's going to get hurt. On location, if you're out there and it's icy and, and wet, well, you've got, you've got a lot more hazards. You don't step in behind the truck when he's going to pick up a load until he is stopped. Because if you assume he's going to stop and it's wet or it's slick, you know, he can hit his brakes 10 foot from what he's backing up to and he's liable to not stop. And uh, you don't want to have yourself in that pinch point. On a typical rig move day, first thing of a morning, myself or the truck pusher will run the route, figure out the best route to move the rig. We'll measure all the high lines and we'll check cattle guards, gates, make sure everything's wide enough to get the rig through and check for any other type hazards, uh, whether they be uh, sloping places in the road, unlevel spots, uh, mud, wetness. Most companies require you to have at least six feet clearance between the top of your load and the bottom of the high line. So we measure the, you know, the high lines and, and measure the loads. Therefore, if we have something that's too tall, we'll have the electric company come out with a bucket truck, either kill the high line and, and raise it while we're getting under it, or we'll set loads down and drag the loads under them. We try to treat every line as if it's hot and we try to have our six foot of clearance, which electricity, most people know that electricity can jump. I've seen it jump and it's, it's, it's pretty frightening. Whenever the trucks get on location, we have our pre-job safety meeting. Uh, we'll shut down all the rig hands. We'll shut down the, all the trucking hands. We gather at the meeting spot on location and we talk about all the hazards, talk about the heights of the loads, the height of the high lines and, and gates and et cetera, and uh, try to warn them of, of you know, every, every hazard that we can think of. 
we've had our pre-job safety meeting. We've talked about our hazards. We've talked about our pinch points and, and anything special that we need to know about the location or the roads or anything. And when we break, everybody goes their direction. The forklift will start loading tubulars out and picking up the front of the rig while the tandems are setting the fuel tank pumps, generators, all that type stuff. Normally on rig move days, you have a lot of different people coming in. You have people delivering drill bits. You have people moving the trailer houses. You have people bringing in the fresh water tanks. You have people bringing in the septic tanks. You try to keep that side of location open for them to where maybe they can get in and, and not be in the way of the actual rig move. Moving rigs can be a dangerous job if you don't know how to keep yourself safe. Whether you're on the rig crew or the trucking crew, your number one job is to know the hazards and stay out of harm's way. Here are some of the things we've learned. Rigs come in all sizes. The bigger the rig, the more it takes to move it. There are different kinds of equipment on a rig move, and each has a job to do. Communicating during a rig move is very important. Everyone on location during a rig move should watch for hazards and communicate with each other at all times. Forklifts move around quickly and can be dangerous. Make sure the driver always knows where you are and never put your hands in the way or try to stop rolling tubulars or collars. You can't stop 3,000 pounds of rolling steel and it can hurt you very badly. Gin pole trucks work together to lift loads, which takes a lot of coordination and communication. Pole trucks usually have two inches and two lines, the big line and the little line. Some trucks have a third line to help keep the load from swinging. You need to know the signals for each line so you can communicate with the truck pusher, the driver, or the swamper. If you are a swamper, you need to keep yourself safe by staying out from under suspended loads and away from pinch points. Make sure your driver can see you at all times and that other drivers in the area know where you are. Learn the hand signals so you can communicate with your driver and always use your tag lines. Tandem trucks are the biggest trucks on a move. Sometimes they will bobtail a load to move it to where a haul truck can pick it up. Haul trucks usually have one winch and a flat trailer or float. The things to watch for are making sure the load is even and chained down properly, and of course, keeping away from pinch points. Cranes may be used to move rigs. If they are, stay out of their way and remember that their signals are probably different from yours. Anytime a crane is working, there is a suspended load. Stay out from under it. Fall protection is required by OSHA anytime you're working more than four feet off the ground. Wearing a harness isn't going to help you if you don't have your lanyard tied off. You'll be moving rigs in all kinds of weather. You need to know how to protect yourself. If you're too hot, slow down, drink some water, and find a place to cool down. If the weather is cold, wear plenty of layers of clothing and watch for icy places where you might slip. Trucks can also slip on ice, so don't go behind one until it is completely stopped. Mud is slippery too, for you and for the trucks. So watch your step and stay clear of moving vehicles if it's muddy. Electricity can kill you. It can also jump. Make sure anything you're moving is at least six feet below a high power line. There are a lot of experienced hands on a rig move. If you don't know what to do or how to do it, ask someone who knows how to do it right. Okay, let's get out under it, everybody get clear. The key to a safe rig move is to communicate with your buddies, the rig hands, your truck pusher, or anyone else on the site. It gets pretty chaotic there whenever you've got so many trucks on location moving, but it, it's just a lot of communicating. Communication is, is the biggest deal, knowing what each truck is going to do and then paying attention and staying back out of the way and watching out for each other. Our job can be dangerous, you know, and it can, it, can really, it can really get confusing a lot of times, but we've been taught through the years, look out after each other and, and try to take care of each other and, and make it a team effort. 
is, is the biggest deal, everybody working together as a team. When we're moving the rig, we're out there for one thing, and that's to get that rig moved as safely and as efficiently as we can and keep everybody out of harm's way and, and watch out after each other. Make sure everybody goes home. <laughs>